welcome to the Be Bold Show. Now, Be Bold stands for bringing education and building opportunity for leadership and development. My name is Crystal Jeanne, and on that note, what we are here to do today is to motivate, encourage, and inspire all entrepreneurs in Ghana. Now, before we get started, um, we'd also like to note that now the only way for Ghana to get better is that if those of us who care, care a little bit at all, step up and make a difference in a small part of the country. Now, I'd like to introduce you to DJ Snoop, who is going to give us a little song to motivate us today. right here on the Be Bold Show. Now, what is happening with the effects of brain drain right now? How do we turn brain drain to brain gain? I'd like to take a look at the diaspora segment now and look at what the people living outside of the country are facing in moving back to Ghana. Let's take a look at this. Hi everyone, my name is Luciane Bannerman and uh, I live in Montreal, Canada. I've been living there for 10 years now and uh, I'm very excited to be on the Be Bold project because I plan to move back to Ghana and I'm looking forward to using all of the fabulous, great resources that they have to provide to us and uh, I really encourage everyone to check it out and uh, let's use this as a great platform to make our country better. Uh, my name is Luciane Bannerman and uh, I live in Montreal, Canada. I have, I have a background in economics and international development and I currently, I studied in Canada and I currently work uh, in Montreal for a non-profit. It's called the World Federation of Hemophilia and uh, what we do is we work on introducing and sustaining healthcare programs for people with bleeding disorders all around the world. Now tell me, you've lived there for how long now? Uh, I'm going into my 10th year. 10th year, yeah. so a decade. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, about that, um, do you ever have any plans of moving back to Ghana? I do, I do have plans. I, um, well, I went there to study, like I said, and then I've been working for a couple of years since I graduated, and uh, I do have plans to move back, but I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to build on some experience and exposure that will help me when I come back to use um, what I've learned okay. in Ghana. Okay. Now, having lived there for so long, can you tell me um, some of the experiences that you have there, like the challenges that you go there as a working um, inter young entrepreneur? Um, well, some of the challenges that I face, I would say um, the biggest one has to be living, I guess, paycheck to paycheck. Um, I'm, as I said, I work for a nonprofit, so it's not, um, it's very community development based and it's, you know, you're not making a huge salary. And also because um, you're a foreigner, you kind of go in and you, you not take what you get, but you don't necessarily, you're not the top of the pick um, in, your, in your field. So you kind of are starting out at the bottom and working your way up. And um, that's not necessarily what everyone else who is from there would face. They probably have more of an advantage in terms of contacts yeah. and that sort of Have you been able to build a lot of contacts but while you've been there? Um, I've built some. I do work for an international organization, so my contacts are more international than Canadian, but, uh, but I'm working on what are some of the challenges? I mean, you come here every holidays to come and, you know, kind of see your family and friends and everything. Do you, what are some of the challenges that you foresee um, as, as Ghanaians, those that are trying to move back from the diaspora? What are those challenges that you foresee? Um, well, I, I do see a lot of challenges. Nothing that can't be overcome, of course, but um, things like uh, just being on time and just the difference in the pace that things operate as um, can be a little frustrating because you might be used to working in a big city where things uh, move really quickly and uh, you might 
want things to happen the same way here and and I know that they don't because um I've done a couple projects here and everything just moves a little slower um also just exposure just uh in terms of the kind of work that you might be faced with here might be a little less multi-dimensional um these are guesses I haven't actually had the experience so I will um I could tell you when <laughs> I do move. Yeah. Um, just little things like um, the traffic. <laughs> yeah. Could discourage you. <laughs> Could discourage you because, um, you know, it, it is... There's traffic everywhere, though. There's traffic everywhere, but Ghana's is a little exceptional. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me, do you think brain drain is a problem in Ghana? Um... I think brain drain is a phenomenon that's occurring in Ghana. I don't know that I think it's a problem. I think it's it only becomes a problem if your country has the capacity to absorb all of the talent that's leaving and has no one doing the work that they need to be done. Um, I think that Ghana has the capacity eventually to absorb um, all of the talent that's gone out. But for now... Uh, I, I, I don't know that it's not operating at full capacity. I think we could do more to have people come back for sure. Can you tell me a bit about that experience, like in regards to the educational system here in Ghana as compared to the one um, in Canada, for instance? Um, I think that I had a great education in Ghana. I would, um, I'd never recommend anything else other than studying in Ghana. Um, it gave me such a great foundation for everywhere else that I've been to. I've never ever felt like I didn't have anything that anybody else who studied anywhere else around the world had. In fact, many times I felt I had an advantage because of the kind of education that I received. Because I studied economics and international development, these are very theoretical um, subjects. And on top of that, when you go to work, one of the things that I've noticed is that your, the amount of um, responsibility that is placed on you is far less than would be here. And a lot of things that are discussed in the office in Montreal in Canada are theoretical. It's if this were to happen, this is how. But when you come to Ghana, those issues are real. And so then you're thrown onto the ground and you have to make it work. And so in that case, you have like you have no choice but to make it work, and that's um, I find when I compare myself to people who studied here and stayed here that they have those hands-on experiences that I don't necessarily have the opportunity, and it's one of the reasons why I'm looking forward to moving back, is uh, getting the chance to have that responsibility and really make a difference because as opposed to working in theory. Thank you for joining us on the show, Lucian. All right, that's it again from Lucianne Bannerman on the Be Bold Talk Show. Now, as you can see, these are real problems that people in the diaspora are facing right now. Now, let's take a break. We'll be back shortly.